What's up YouTube? Murphy Firearms Training here. I have today a Jucar 45 caliber Kentucky rifle. And I want to show you this entire gun. It's this very long gun. So it starts here with the brass bus butt plate and a very, very steep, steep stock angle here. The lock, single trigger, and then the long, long, long gun with a brass nose cap. Okay, so this long full stock gun here. Okay, this long full stock gun. It is a two-piece stock. So this is considered a Kentucky rifle. Um, some folks would call this a Pennsylvania rifle, although the Pennsylvania rifles tend to be more ornate. But these are both fall into the family of what's called a full stock rifle. And that means that the stock goes from the butt all the way to the muzzle, okay? A full stock rifle. Now, this is a reproduction. This is actually a kit gun, and I can tell that this is a kit gun, and that is that somebody bought this and had to assemble it and do the inletting and all of that, and they did an okay job, but there's a few spots that kind of tell this is a kit gun. There's a little gap here. The uh, profile of the stock from here to here doesn't quite match. There's a little bump here. Um, the biggest tell for me is that this was not inlet, and so there's this, it kind of sticks up. You can see it sticks up there. Uh, and, and perhaps, it's it's a Jew car, it's made in Spain. Perhaps that is how the factory delivered them, but I think typically my experience with muzzle loaders is factory guns have a little better fit and finish. The other thing is that the, the barrel is not blued. Um, when I took this thing apart, I realized the barrel is not blued. It's actually painted. Um, and so that's, I'm going to show you a spot where the paint has flaked off. Okay, so it's it's not blued because bluing doesn't do that. This has been painted. And so I'm pretty sure this is a kit gun. Well, anyway, someone brought it to me. They said, hey, it's hanging on the wall. I noticed the end of it's gotten really rusty. Can you clean it up for me? Sure. And one of the things I wanted to do was I noticed there's no YouTube videos that I could find, not any good ones anyway, on how to take apart a Pennsylvania or Kentucky full stock rifle from Traditions or CVA or Jucar. So I want to show you how to take apart a Kentucky, Pennsylvania, or a full stock style rifle like this. Uh, and it's pretty simple. First things first, you're always going to put your gun at half cock, leave it at half cock, okay? Now, um, the big thing, of course, is most folks know how to get the lock out, but I'm going to show you how to get the lock out. Then I'm going to show you how to get the barrel out of the stock. Before I do that, I'm going to tell you this style rifle with the two-piece stock. It's got this brass spacer in it. And you typically will see two pins. So you'll have a pin here just in front of that spacer and then a pin further forward near the center barrel band. And then, like I said, you'll have this brass nose cap typically. Okay, how to take one of these apart. Before I show you this, I'm going to tell you two things. First of all, sometimes these pins cannot be located because somebody actually sands these down and putties over them with wood putty, and it, you can't find them. They're very hard to find. You have to really, really look at it if they finished it like that. This one is not the case. Second, these guns were not meant to be taken apart and put back together regularly for cleaning like your half stocks that have a barrel wedge because, and I'll show you why, but because these screws and these pins tend to wear out if you pull them in and out, in and out, in and out, okay? So anyway, I'm going to grab a few tools. I'm going to show you what you need, and we're going to take this thing out of the stock. So to do this job, you're going to need a punch. You really need a one-eighth or smaller punch, okay? This is a one-eighth punch. I use my little homemade, this is my homemade brass hammer. I made this on a lathe, but you know, a, a small hammer, and then I've got a couple of screwdriver tips. These are the nice hollow ground tips. They're not straight edge tips for electrical work. They're actually hollow ground. They're made for this type of screw, okay? A small and a large. I don't think I'll need both. Um, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and just take the lock off. So there's going to be two screws here. You got this plate that's inlet into the stock, um, and the bigger screwdriver tip should fit those, okay? Yep. It does. So we'll take these two screws out. Now, when I take these two screws out, okay, they won't turn much. They'll come out. We'll set them to the side, okay? 
Okay. That frees your lock. So if you wiggle that lock, pops out, and you'll see where your lock goes in. You can see it's been fired because there's some powder residue in there. You can see that it's been fired. But we take our lock out. You can see how your trigger works. Your trigger just rotates a bar, okay? And that bar hits right here, okay? And so this is your full cock notch. This is your half cock notch. And then that's uncocked, okay? So leave that back at half cock for all of our maintenance, okay? Now, that's the first step. So we got our lock off. Now, second step is to separate the barrel from, okay, the stock. We're going to pull the ramrod out, okay? We're going to pull the ramrod out. And the reason we have to pull the ramrod out, okay, um, is because at some point the ramrod engages with a piece on the barrel, okay, on most of these guns. And that may not be true for every single version of this gun, but it's a good idea to take the ramrod out so that you don't pry against it. Now, um, do be careful. On some guns, there is a joint here. On some guns, there is a joint here. What that means is this piece stays in the stock and this piece rotates out. And I'm going to show you how to know that. Okay, so hang on one second. Let me grab my other rifle. So on this Kentucky or Pennsylvania style rifle, you do see a line here. And you would think that's a separate piece. It is not. It is part of the barrel. Um, do be careful because you can bend this and actually break it off, okay? And the way you know this is the end of the barrel, and then you just have this little piece of metal that helps attach it to the stock, okay? Now, if you go here, this is a Hawkins-style rifle that takes a wedge and key. I've got the wedge out of it right now, but it takes a wedge and a key, and you'll see there's a, a definite gap here. There's a definite spot. You can catch your nail on it. And you can see that there's this extra piece inlet into the stock that's not part of the octagon barrel, okay? These, you simply lift and rotate out, voila, okay? Just like that, okay? After you take the barrel key out, and there's hundreds of videos on those. On this one, you're going to actually remove this screw here, okay? So you're actually going to remove this screw here at the back of the breech block, okay? So we'll remove that screw. Okay, there we go. So we remove that screw. That goes actually threads down into the trigger here. Okay, so we remove that. Careful not to bend this. Now, the other thing we've got to do, we're going to come all the way up here to the nose of the gun. Careful not to break the front sight off or anything. We're going to come up here to the nose of the gun. So here's the this brass barrel band. And one of the reasons you got to move the, the rod is to get to this, okay? Now change screw tips. This one, uh, the big screw tip won't quite fit. So I change to my little screwdriver here. We're going to remove these two screws. Now one of these screws goes into the wooden stock, and one of these screws goes into the metal in the barrel, okay? So we're going to remove both of these screws. And I think the one going into the wood is starting to strip. Um, it is it is pretty easy to turn, and it's not kind of positively backing out. Now, and you tend to see that a lot with these guns. That's one of the reasons they don't recommend taking them apart. So the one that's threading into the wood is pretty much stripped. Okay, but we're going to take those two screws out. So you can see here we've got metal and wood, right? And that's kind of your nose cap there. So we're going to remove those. Okay, then. We're going to drive out these pins, and y'all know if you've seen my videos, one of the reasons I've got these two boards here is that I can actually sit down and uh, place these pins where I want them so that they go into these gaps in my boards, okay? But we're going to take this pin here, okay, this pin here, we're going to drive it out first. That's the first one we're going to drive out, and all we got to do here, and get this to sit like I want it to sit, is take our 1 8 punch, okay? Take our 1 8 punch and just tap, okay? Just give it a tap. You'll see it's starting to come out. And you should be able to pull them out, depending on how many times it's been taken apart. And then we're going to do the same thing with the front pin. We're going to line it up, get it where we're happy, 
Okay, so line it up, get it where we're happy. Come on. And we're going to drive it out. Okay, same thing. We're going to put our punch on it. And we're going to just drive it out. And be very, very careful not to mar the stock. A lot of people trying to drive these pins out, they end up tearing their stock up. And that's kind of totally not what we want to do. We don't want to tear the stock on this gun up. It's a beautiful gun. Okay, so we'll get that started. Here we go. Just like that. Okay, get it started. Pull it out the back. Okay, now, everything holding this rifle together is off. Okay, everything holding this rifle together is off. And so what you want to do is kind of lift up front and back, and it just falls out of the stock. Okay, so here is your empty half stock. And you can see there's a screw here, here, and here that hold on the three bands for your ramrod. So those thread into the ramrod, and if they're loose, right, the ramrod ferrules, and if they're loose, you can tighten these screws while it's out of the stock, okay? And you see this slot here and this slot here. And there's two little pieces of the barrel there and there that go into them. And those two pieces of the barrel are where those pins go through. And if you take these pins in and out, in and out, in and out, eventually the wood and those metal pieces and the pins themselves from somewhere, you start to get a loose barrel. Okay, So that's how you take this apart. Now, once you've got it apart, what I recommend is you take some beeswax or I use a firearms wax, it's a crystalline firearms wax, and you wax this, okay? You could also use a grease. I wouldn't use like uh, Crisco or vegetable shortening, but but something that's not going to go rancid, not, not a food grade grease, but something that's not going to go rancid, um, like a white lithium grease or something. And you put a real thin coat on the underside of this barrel, and you put it down into this stock, and then that way, you don't have to worry about oiling the un underside of that barrel. You don't have to take this thing apart every time you use it, okay? So anyway, that's how you take it apart. Now, how do you put it back together? It's pretty much a reverse process. So you're going to take your stock. And by the way, be careful. If you set the stock up like this, you're putting a ton of tension on this joint here. And you can see on this particular one, it is a little loose, okay? Okay. Do be careful with that. There are pins that hold this together. You don't want to wallow those pins out. So there's pins that go in here. You don't want to wallow this out so that it's a loose fit. So do, do be careful how you set this thing down. But you're going to take this barrel and you're going to kind of push it down and back at the same time. Down and back at the same time. And I like to push on the muzzle end and make sure that this is all the way back here. Okay? So once we've got that there... It's an inverse process. We're going to take our pins and drive those in. So here's pin number one. Okay. And I'm going to hold the gun up off the bench, and I'm just going to tap that in. Okay. And what I'm feeling for is to feel it kind of go flush with the back side. Okay. And the other reason I think this is a kit gun, you saw one of the holes was not quite right on the uh, underside of the barrel. It looked like it was not drilled right. And then one of the pins, the front pin is actually too long. It sticks out um, and normally from the factory, so you can see that pin actually sticks out from the wood. At the factory, they would have ground that down flush. Um, so like I said, I, I think this is a kit gun somebody built. So you put those pins back in. You're going to put your nose cap back on. Again, you can see this screw has seen better days. It's pretty, it's pretty rough. It's the one going into the wood. Um, it looks like it's pretty well stripped. Um, and by the way, the uh, nose cap goes a certain way. It only goes one way. You see it's got this ridge in it, so it's got the thin spot and the thick spot. The thin spot has to go towards the back, and the thin, the, excuse me, the thin spot goes towards the back, and the thick spot goes towards the muzzle. And you'll see that. Let me come up here and show you, because you've got this step. Okay, you've got this step. So that goes just like so. And again, be careful with your front sight. It can be quite fragile. Don't uh, don't break the front sight on your gun trying to disassemble it or reassemble it. Okay, and we'll thread this in. Um, if you find that this just won't thread in at all, it just and this one has a little bit of bite left to it, but not much. If you find it won't thread in at all, one of the quick fixes you can do 
is you can actually get an old um, box of wooden matches and you can take a wooden match and stick down in that wooden hole, break it off flush, and then screw the screw in. And that'll actually, uh, it, uh, it, it, it adds some wood for the screw to bite to. So anyway, we'll go ahead and put our ramrod back. So put our ramrod back through all three ferrules and back into the stock here. Ta-da! Okay, so we got our pins, we got our nose cap, we've got our ramrod. We're going to put our screw here that goes through to our trigger. We're going to put our screw here that goes through to our trigger. Um, doodle, 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 doodle. There it is. I lost it. I was like, where is it? I lost it. So it goes there, and we're going to thread that in. Okay, so thread our screw in that goes to our trigger. And uh, one of the fun things is if you do have a screw that's kind of stripped or kind of boogered or not, not quite doing right, they do sell parts to these. Um, they're pretty easy to come by. Let's see if you can see that. So there's the screw actually sticks out of the trigger guard. So that goes all the way through the stock from top to bottom. Okay. So our barrel is now back in this gun. Okay. We're going to put our lock back in this gun. To put the lock back in, you're going to just take it, still at half cock, okay? It has to be at half cock if you want it to, to fit back. I guess it could be at full cock, but it can't be all the way down. If the, if the cock or the hammer is all the way down, it'll hit the nipple, okay? So anyway, I'll wait for YouTube to demonetize this because I said cock and nipple. Um, <laughs> childish, I know. All right, so then we put our screws back. On some of these guns, the screw length matters um, because they've ground these screws a certain length. On this particular gun I've played with it, the screws are the same length. It doesn't matter, but just do be careful that sometimes on certain guns, you really do need to uh, make sure the screws go back in the same place. And if that's an issue, I suggest you kind of put them somewhere on your bench so that you can find them. But you're going to snug those. Don't over-tighten them. A lot of people over-tighten these things. Um, it just needs to be snug. I mean, you know, like tightening scope rings, a few inch pounds. It's not, don't crank it way down. Okay. Voila, we have a fully functioning, ready to fire, hopefully accurate Kentucky full stock rifle. So a full stock Kentucky rifle, beautiful gun. Okay. Nothing fancy, nothing great, but just kind of a neat gun. Um, it is a 1 in 66 twist. It'll only shoot patched round ball. You can't shoot conical bullets out of this. They'll tumble. Um, but it's a, it's a cool gun, and it's a neat gun. And if you ever need to take one apart, I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I appreciate your support. Thanks, guys.